everybody y'all my name is chelsea louie or chelsea Lou Who art and today i'm going to show you how to use prisma color colored pencils to color a light skin tone on my power from chainsaw man drawing let's get started okay so first we're going to go over our materials really quick i'm using the prisma color premiere softcore colored pencils this is the 72 pack this is what the cover looks like um, I've been using these for years. The colors come out super rich and vibrant. They go on really thick. They're very, they're amazing for layering. So this is what I use. We got three layers of pencils in here. I would recommend, unless you just want to try out the pencils, if you just want to try out the pencils, I would recommend getting like the, um, the smaller ones just to see what they're like. But I would recommend getting like the bigger pack um if not the 72 pack of pencils the 48 pack of pencils they're about 80 something cents uh a piece if you buy this if so like this pencil i have used a lot um but the great thing about buying the big the big pack right up is like they're they're cheaper um for the price of the pencil so when my pencils get really small then i just go online and i just buy one pencil at a time to replace these um the, the pencils by themselves just one pencil is like over two dollars they're definitely not the cheapest pencil for sure but i love them another thing you can do is you can buy these aluminum pencil lengtheners you would just take your pencil and you would stick it in this hole right here you would have here to take your short pencil and stick it in the hole and tighten it and then you got a nice brand new long pencil going on there these are great those this uh it comes in a six pack of pencils or pen or those pencil lengtheners comes in a six pack for about eight or nine dollars and i will also have um I will have the colored pencils as well as the aluminum pencil lengtheners linked in my um, in my description. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your coffee, take a sip of that, and we're ready to get started here. So out of all my colors that I have chosen, I'm going to start with. Not the lightest color, not like white or this cream color, but kind of a light color that's not the lightest color. You want maybe one or one color that's lighter and then also white for the highlights. So I'm choosing light peach. And so to get started here, we're just going to super lightly color her entire face. I already did her face. I'm gonna do her neck real quick. Use kind of circular kind of motions. Um, so that it goes over the entire page there. So it'll get nice and blended later. Um, you probably can't even see it very well because this color is very light. We're just going to color over our entire face. And I also... So next you're going to get like a peach color, a color that's slightly darker. Um, pretty much for the skin, I'm going to be using peach, light peach, and umber for the darkest areas. And then we're also going to put in a little bit of other kinds of tones in there. Oh, well, you're going to use beige too. These are all kind of like the same kind of colors. And then we got a little bit of yellow, some blush pink, and then white for the highlights. Um, but these are going to be the main four that we're going to use. And then we're just going to throw in a little yellow and a little pink as well. We don't want her face to just be like one flat color. So the next one we're going to use is going to be peach and feel free to experiment and 
see what works best for you. I am going to be linking a YouTube video from Kirsty Partridge Art and I pretty much use that as like a reference to get a feel for what colors to use exactly. Not exactly. Um, just to get a feel for what colors would look good with each other. I watched this video years ago. She does use a lot of different colors and she has different skin tones too, which is great. She has like um, a yellow tinted skin tone, a medium skin tone, and then she has this light skin tone, and then she has a dark skin tone. So that's very helpful for different kinds of characters. Um, so next we're going to go with a color that's a little bit darker and you could use this. Um, I like to do like swatches too where I just color all these colors together and see what looks good together. And I would start with the lightest one, color the whole thing, then you pick the next darkest one which is going to be peach. And we're just going to go over very, very lightly where all of the um, shadows are going to be. And you're going to want to do it in like a circular motion like that. to get it over the lines and the ink but if you do a little bit that's definitely okay um and i'm new at the neo-traditional style so i'm going to be coloring in the shadows too i'm going to be coloring this part right here darker and then i'm going to do like a highlight right here on her cheek like you would make up. Could have probably done a little highlight right here on the top of her ear, but that's okay. Um, since the colors aren't completely set and pressed into the paper yet, there's still a little room for blending to be done there. The trick is to really not press hard at all and um, because like my chainsaw man here, once the colors are fully pressed into the paper, um, that's about it. Otherwise if you try to keep coloring on top of this, it's, it's going to make a hole in the paper. So um, I kind of use like generic kind of paper. This is the Strathmore sketchbook. It's, um, it's pretty good paper, but, um, you're more than welcome to buy some really nice thick paper as well to avoid that. You could probably put more color in it too. All right. So I don't want to add a whole bunch of shadows just yet because I'm honestly not super sure of how or like where I'm gonna do it just yet. Um, I like the beige color a lot. 
it's a very neutral color and I really do like the beige for blending a lot too um blending a lot of the shadows so we're gonna just do a very light layer kind of over what we've already done as far as shadows you're not gonna really see a huge difference here but that's okay doing the first like um layer of each color is just you kind of mapping out where the shadows are going to be i'm just not going to put it right here at the top of the ear because i want to actually make that part lighter and we're gonna blend it down a little bit too so where the the peach was the second color I'm just gonna go like a little bit further and again we're we're gonna draw each layer um, you're just gonna want to use a tiny bit more pressure just a little bit at the end we're gonna use we're gonna use full pressure full force And um, another uh, really good tip that I have is when you're blending colors too, you have like um, some really light colors and some really dark colors whenever you're blending. I would check the tip of your pencil and see if it's dirty because if you happen to get like a little speck of blue or black or a dark color on a light color and then you try to do it it's gonna get pressed right into your drawing all right so now i have light umber and again i'm going to put all these colors that i use in the numbers and everything in the description i want to put them in like order of like how I use them too. So we're gonna take the umber and we're just gonna put this super super lightly in the darkest spots. And you want you want to put you want to layer it and have all these colors on top of each other so that at the end you get a really nice blend. Otherwise, it'll look a little weird. This is the neo-traditional style, so I feel like there's a lot more shading. You can get a lot more into it with the the contrast between the shading and the highlights and everything. very lightly. We're going to use all of these colors again on a second pass. The trick is just to go slow and work your way up.
right now before we get like super too into it um let's add let's block out like kind of some areas that need some highlights so i'm gonna use this cream color it's yellow and it gives it not like super kind of flat look to it so we're gonna go in with this and blend it maybe not um just on the highlights i like to blend it um kind of kind of where the shadows are into like the skin and the highlighted areas and start out little just a little bit too because um less is more and you can always add more too we don't want her skin to be super flat but we also don't want it um super yellow either so we're just gonna add a little bit. Maybe I'll do some more shadows around her hair. One super duper important thing, and I just kind of very recently started doing this, is get a just a really cheap brush. You probably already have one in your house. Um, just a makeup brush that's clean, um, a makeup brush, a very soft paint brush, and brush away all the excess, especially once you start pressing it in there. Um, you don't want like little pieces from your darkest color getting smashed into where you want to highlight and stuff. So this will keep it nice and clean. And once we get like kind of like a good idea of... Well, actually, I wanted to add a little bit more shadow right here. Just a little bit. Alright, that's good enough for now. Oh, you know what? I want to add a little bit of shadow underneath her lips, too. Just a little bit. And then this circle is going to be a highlight, as long as, as long, as well as this one on her nose. So, then once you've got like a pretty good idea of your colors, where your shadows, your highlights are going to go, then you're going to go back with like your lightest the one that you started with your base one and you're gonna go over that again super lightly this is all a part of building up your layers you want to make sure that you consistently use all of the colors to build up your layers so that they blend super super nice with each other at the end you could put a little bit more pressure as you go if you want to i'm not super ready to start pressing down just yet i want to make sure that i get the colors like super nice Once you're super confident with what colors are going where, then you can definitely start pressing down. So I think I'm almost done figuring out where all my colors are going to be. Like the neck area 
super simple, super easy to do. That's about done as far as where the colors are gonna go. I might want, and then once once you go over that layer again, you're gonna go back to the next darkest pencil, which is the peach. So you're pretty much gonna start over with the colors that you've used. Um, so I want kind of like a little bit of highlight right there, so I'm gonna not go over that. Anywhere that you want highlights is probably the only part where you're gonna not color with the darker ones. And again, since this is the second pass, you can start putting a little bit more pressure on there. Not too much though, until you're super confident with where the colors are. Don't forget the nose. And see, I didn't have any shading right there. So that's why you want to work in layers. You can add a little bit more right there. And you can go over it as many times as you need to. Alright, so that's a pretty good pass, I would say. So then we're going to go, um, we're going to do the beige. The beige, I really think I love this color. Instead of using the blending pencil, because the blending pencil isn't as waxy, as the actual colored pencils it kind of has like this kind of scratchy weird texture to it i like to i like to i don't like to use that i like to just um pick pick a color that's kind of in between there or the color that you're going to want to use as the top and this this is going to be like my blending pencil yes yeah, this color is a little bit more yellow but it definitely blends the peach the umber the light umber and the light peach together really well i think um again it's a great idea to make swatches on a different piece of paper um like at the back of your sketchbook you can have like a dedicated swatches page or just rip one out and test them on there uh, before you put it on your piece because unlike digital art you can't really <laughs> it's hard to undo <laughs> the colored pencils once it's on the paper it's pretty much on the paper I don't know if you could see really well but right here on the nose it's already starting to become 
pretty blended. You're not seeing any of the white spots as much right there. Um, so we're getting there, we're almost done. The trick is to just be super patient and use lots of layers. And we're getting about ready to do the, to, to press it in there. again to do the shading some more um don't worry if you think this is too dark you can go back over it again with the lighter shade and it'll lighten everything up sometimes it is a little challenging to blend your darkest color in so just make sure you go super lightly with that and you add some layers that's something I'm still working on. As long as you're patient and you draw super lightly and you use a bunch of layers, uh, it'll turn out really good. So since our pencils are starting to really stick to the paper now, I want to use the darkest color Pretty much only in the darkest spots. Definitely don't press down super hard with this because it won't come off the paper once it's set in there. We're gonna go a little darker on the neck. We're gonna use a little bit more pressure because I know exactly the next pretty pretty easy I know exactly where I want the shadows and press it in all the way because you still want to do some blending we're just gonna stick a little bit more right here I don't want it to be super dark around her face but I want it to be just dark enough because this is like a different style than I usually do and I think you want more more dark darks and more light lights when you're doing like a neo-traditional style Add a little bit more shadow here we're gonna have to blend that out again since I didn't have that the umber color on the paper right there just a tiny bit super light If you don't get every single little piece in there with every pass through, then that one little spot's not going to be blended and it's going to look a little off. So yeah, the best advice I can give 
to you, and I'll probably say this a thousand more times, is just to take it slow and use as many layers as you need to. So, we'll, we'll do some more little highlights in there, too. Um, a little bit more yellow in there. And don't forget, after you use a dark color, there's going to be tiny little flakes of that. You want to brush those away so they don't get pressed into your light areas. All right, so probably only need like one more pass on this. We're just gonna go back in again and start over with our lightest color. And you can definitely start using a little bit more pressure here if you're super confident with the placement of your colors I would say just don't color where you're gonna be using the absolute highlights like right here I'm leaving like a little area right here on her cheek because I want to have like a very super contrasting colors I want very light pressed up against very dark for this one. I'm kind of just doing a super light layer over everything that's not going to be almost like a white highlight. Okay. One more time with the, uh, the peach. Get to get all the tiny little crevices. With uh, drawings that don't have as much detail, but it's obviously easier. So I know I'm like this hard line right here, I want this to be this color, so I press it pretty hard. Not like a full 
Not 100% pressure just yet, but pretty close. There's a uh, big old pile of colored pencil right there. <laughs> All right, I'm brush it off. And we'll go back one more time with like the beige. And you can start pressing harder. Still not quite a hundred percent. That's what it looks like now after a couple of layers on it. I know the pencils are kind of shiny. Still got some like white spots in there. It's not all the way pressed down like this yet. And we're almost done. Um, we're gonna take our white. Make sure when you use the light colors again that there's no little residue from uh, other colors on there and we're just going to lightly add white in the highlighted areas I don't want them to be white, but um, pretty close. So this light peach. So now we're we're going in. We're just gonna start blending all the colors together now. I do I do definitely like just start pressing um, start pressing down 
hard, harder. Don't press down like 100% to where it's, you can't see any white in the paper yet because we're still going to make maybe a little, a few more little changes here and there. But start pressing down kind of hard and really blend it, start blending it together. And I know in Kirsty's video, she was she was coloring a circle to demonstrate the blending and stuff. So it is it is going to be harder um, when you're doing an actual drawing of a person, and there's all these little lines and stuff everywhere. Just warning you now, it's not it's not going to be as easy as doing it in the circle. That video is really great. I'm gonna make it just a little dark over here. So I didn't wanna press down all the way yet so I can still add some color in there. go over the dark spots probably like one more time and then we'll blend it all in really good and again i'm not a pro at this or anything this is just kind of my method to do it and um there's always room for improvement as well so if you have any personal tips or tricks or anything on how you like to use the prisma colors, uh, definitely comment that below. They're kind of a, a trial and error type thing. And um, again, yeah, make uh, swatches and see what your colors are going to look like on your paper before you start laying down a bunch of color. I don't know what that is. There's like this big line right here now. Maybe we can get that to blend out. So yeah, pretty much, pretty much just, um, we're almost done here. Pretty much, just start with the lightest color, go a little darker, go a little darker, go a little darker until you get to your darkest one and then start over and then press a slightly more hard until you get your colors everywhere that you want and then just start smashing them in there. And if you need to go back and add a little bit more of one color, definitely do that. So now I'm doing almost, almost, almost full pressure now. I'm pretty happy with my colors. I'm going back in and blending it. I want like a little bit more of a light color there.
Because I realize it's a little darker than I want it to be, so I'm taking my lighter color and kind of filling it in. And you can, if you didn't press like super, super hard, there's still a little bit more room to go back. I wanted this a little lighter right here. It's like a little highlight there. Make sure your pencils are super sharp all the time. Alright, so I actually really like how this is coming out. I was uh, kind of unsure because of these hard lines that I drew here, but I think it's looking, um, it's looking pretty good. And I know everyone always says this, but you gotta, definitely when you're working with Prismacolors, you gotta trust the process. Even if you feel like maybe you didn't choose the exact right colors together, um, you can kind of start to tell when you're starting your first couple of layers if they're not gonna really blend, if, if the colors don't really go together. And then you have time to change it too. So like the first one or two layers, you can test and see if your colors are looking good together. If not, um, just take one of those colors out and just keep blending on top. And I like, I like to play with like a bunch of weird colors too. When we do the background of this piece, I like mixing like blues and greens and purples to all together. You can create some really cool pieces like that, mixing just different colors together. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and finish up her neck really quick, because that's easy. So, I um, actually, let's add a little bit more peach right here. Blend it so it's not a super harsh, dark blend line. Beige is, this is the color that I really like to use to blend. So we're gonna go in and go a little harder. All right, got a lot of color deposit right there. Let's just brush that off. Make sure you brush it off your whole page too so your hand and stuff isn't smudging the pencils everywhere. Um, beige is what I was using. I don't know what was up with that line. Um, these pencils, they can be a little bit messy with the control, but as long as you take your time and keep your page nice and clean, it'll look really good. The colors are super bright and vibrant, and that's um that's the reason why i really love the prisma colors so her neck is about finished i'm gonna press really hard now and blend up too into all the other colors that you've done and uh let's see those light peach it does have like um a bit of a pink tone to it so we'll add a little bit of white in there. Put some beige in here. And we're pressing now. This will be the final layer where you want to really press in the color that you really want to be on the top there. Um, except for maybe your darkest color. 
it depends. I really want it right here on her jaw to differentiate that like um can't think of words <laughs> i want it to be very dark right there and then i'm gonna bend that oh chirping we're gonna blend that in with the peach we're gonna press hard we're gonna get that fully blended. Um, beige, Put some beige in there. I'll bring the beige out too. I really love this beige color. We'll put a little bit more. Make sure always that your pencils are really sharp um, to get into these little areas. to be a little lighter and we'll even add some white in there once the colors are pressed down then i like to press down really hard with the white and those colors are in there pretty solid <laughs> all right we're almost done let's do her nose now I like to go over it just really, really lightly with the peach. It's a peach right here. Oh, peach does have like a really pink tone to it. So at this point, you're just gonna keep switching all your colors and keep um, blending and pressing them down and like really fine tuning your, your colors.
the nose. I want it to be a little darker. This could be filling in a little bit more. some little specks right there because one of my pencils is not clean Oh, oh, there's a little specks in it. Don't, don't worry too much. Um, most people will not be able to tell at all. <laughs> Someone just got to do like this little cheek area, pretty much. Use white for the highlights. blush pink. Put some pink in there too if you want.
is going to do fill in this little area in real quick and then we're done. Make sure that you give it a nice one, two, three little layers before you start pressing down super hard. All right. I'm going to go in with the white, make sure my white is clean. I'll go on with the white and I'll press really hard on the highlighted areas and then maybe I'll go in with the white too and press lighter on the areas that aren't going to be solid like super highlighted like right here I'll press like maybe medium and go in and do it and not for the whole entire thing but Just to give it more colors, more cohesive. And there you go. I could probably um, go back like a little bit more and do some fine tuning and stuff right there. But that's uh, pretty much what she's going to look like. Or... So I'm gonna do just like a tiny bit, few more things, just make sure that um, by it, all the lines, like it's like really colored and there's not really any like little white spots showing, you can see right here. So I'm just gonna fine tune that real quick and then I'll get a picture. So yeah, that's pretty much how I like to color my skin tones and everything. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for upcoming videos and art related content. My socials are linked in the description below as well as my YouTube banner if you guys want to check out more of my art. This video was edited by the handsome Haldion. Please go check out his YouTube channel as and that is also linked in the description below. I have a lot more stuff coming your way. I got giveaways and contests and stay tuned for more content. I hope y'all have a wonderful day or night and I'll see y'all soon.